welcome to the inaugural webinar in the Code HS November webinar series. Uh, and this one will be covering how you can create a homepage on Code HS. So, my name is Calvin. I'm a software engineer at Code HS, and I built a couple of the courses on Code HS as well. So, you might recognize my voice from AP Computer Science Principles or Web Design. Uh, but today, I'll be walking through how we can create our own websites, create our own homepages on Code HS. And hosting this webinar with me is Emily. Emily, you want to go ahead and introduce yourself? Uh, hey guys, I'm Emily. Um, I also am a software engineer. Glad to have everyone here. Um, I'll be helping to answer questions. Awesome. Thanks, Emily. And so, yeah, let's go ahead and dive in. While we're going through, feel free to ask questions in the Q&A and I'll make sure to uh, pause throughout the webinar and address any questions that have come up. Um, and then Emily will constantly be answering questions over, te over text in the Q&A. And so this is our agenda for the webinar. We're gonna talk about what exactly is a homepage, what do we mean when we say create a homepage. Uh, we'll talk about creating our homepage on CodeHS and how CodeHS allows you to do that. Uh, we'll actually dive in and create one ourselves and I'll do a little demo of how to do that on an actual CodeHS account. Um, if you wanna log into CodeHS in the meantime, you can follow along uh, the steps that I do and you can create your own homepage so you have something to reference and come back to. Uh, also, this webinar is being recorded, so if you want to come back and watch this video later, that will be available and Claire will send out a link to that. Um, and if you missed the webinar, if there's someone you know who maybe wants to see the webinar, this will be available uh, even if you weren't here in person. So yeah, and then we'll finish off with some questions. So right off the bat, what is a homepage? What do we mean when we say homepage? So the term homepage here, really we're just talking about a website. So a lot of times a homepage is kind of like your personal portfolio page, or it's kind of this, uh, just a single web page you put up uh, that can be about yourself. Uh, but really what we're providing is the opportunity to build an entire website more than just a single web page. But the, uh, the first web page you come to when coming to this custom website is gonna be called the homepage. And so it's a website built by you or built by a student um, and it's hosted on a domain of your choosing. Um, and so it's gonna be hosted on a subdomain of codehs.me. And so codehs.me is a domain that's owned by codehs. And when you own a domain, you actually own all subdomains as well. So www.codehs.me, calvin.codehs.me, emily.codehs.me. Uh, these are all available and you or a student can uh, actually claim one subdomain of codehs.me and then that will be your personal website. Um, and then once you've claimed that subdomain, uh, you can start writing HTML and CSS code to build a website at that location, at that domain on the internet. And then that is now a real URL. That is a URL you can share with family and friends, put it on your resume, um, and this will be a publicly available website. And so this is important to note too, is that the website is public. This isn't something that's behind a login wall or anything, or that you need to have a CodeHS account to see. Um, this is a real website that you're putting on the internet for anyone to see. And so this is a good opportunity to discuss things like personally identifying information with students um, and have them think about, you know, what kind of information should they be putting on their own website, uh, keeping in mind that this is public. And so you really don't want to be putting, you know, your email address or your, your home address, these kind of things on the internet. You should be careful about that. Uh, so for example, here are some codehs.me homepages that people on the team have made. Uh, so we can actually view mine. This is calvin.codehs.me. And so we see this is a real URL. I could share this. This is just a publicly available web page. Um, notice too, it says not secure. So you don't actually have to worry about that. That just means that the website is being uh, hosted over HTTP rather than HTTPS. The reason you would want to use HTTPS is if you're building a website that involves uh, sensitive information that needs to be encrypted. So things like passwords and credit card information. Since this is just a basic homepage, it really doesn't matter. We don't need to host it over HTTPS. Um, and so you don't have to worry about that, but that's, that's an interesting uh, opportunity to teach about too, is the different protocols, HTTP versus HTTPS. This website is hosted on HTTP. Um, and so we can see I made a little web page, just kind of talked about myself, made a calendar. It's really, this is a good, uh, Kind of sandbox for students to practice the HTML and CSS skills that they're learning in some of the CodeHS courses or maybe that they're just going off and learning on their own. Um, and it's an easy way to put all of that code, all of that, those web page code that you're writing 
on the internet really quickly and easily without having to actually go out and buy a domain name and buy a web server and put all those files there. Um, let's check out a couple others. Let's check out Emily's. There we go. It's Emily's birthday. Say happy birthday, Emily. And then this is Jeremy's. Jeremy's got a really cool one. He's got some JavaScript running on the page, so you can actually hover over these things uh, and get some interaction on the web page. Um, and another thing I wanted to point out, which is cool, is like I said, this this will land on one web page, which is your home page, but it doesn't stop there. You can add as many web pages as you want to this website. You just have to specify a specific URL for that page. So, for example, it was my friend John's birthday recently, so I made him a web page called HBD. HTML. If you go there, just as happy birthday, John. So that's an example of another public web page that I've put on in addition to my homepage. Okay, let's get this full screen again. Are there any questions so far about uh, what we mean by homepage and what a homepage is? Let me see if the QA is going. Okay, cool. Looks like Emily's answered a question. Um, yeah, so if you have any further questions, go ahead and post those in the Q&A and Emily will answer those for you. Um, but let's move on to now that we know what a homepage is and what kind of things we can put on it. Uh, how do we go about actually making a homepage on CodeHS? And so creating a homepage is pretty simple. It lives in your sandbox. And so the sandbox is the, the CodeHS area outside of any curriculum, outside of any courses. It's just a space for students to start building a new program or a new website from scratch. And so once you get to your sandbox page, you should see a big green button that says edit my codehs.me homepage. Um, and when you click on this, if you haven't already, you'll be prompted to set your codehs username. And your username is the same, your username is how you claim a subdomain of codehs.me. So that's why mine is calvin.codehs.me, but you can set your username to anything. It could be horses or cats or California, whatever. Um, and so you're claiming that website, you're claiming that subdomain of codehs.me by setting your username. Um, once you click that, you'll be taken into the code editor and that's where you'll be writing um, all of your HTML and CSS code that make up the actual web pages. So are there questions about that, about how to get to the sandbox and how to start creating your homepage? Let's check the Q&A. Yes, this is available on free. This is not a paid uh, feature of CodeHS. Um, but yeah, Emily will keep answering your questions over text. Emily, chime in if there's something I should uh, speak out loud, but otherwise we'll just have those questions over in text in the chat. Um, and with that, let's go ahead and- Wait, uh, Calvin? Yeah. Uh, do you want to just quickly go over navigating to the homepage again? Yeah, so let, we'll do that in the demo. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, with that, let's try it. Let's actually dive in and create a homepage. And if you want to log into CodeHS and follow along, um, you can definitely do that. And yeah, Claire's posting some, uh, some articles as well. Uh, that'll give you step-by-step -step how to get to your homepage. And so this is just a fresh teacher account that I've created. I don't have any sections yet. I don't have any students. Um, but you should, when you, log into, when you first log into CodeHS, this is the page you're taken to, your teacher page. From any page on CodeHS, you should be able to get to the sandbox uh, just in this top left corner here. And so I'm going to go ahead and click on my sandbox. This is the same for students as well. They'll always have that sandbox link right there in the corner. Um, and so I have a fresh sandbox right now. I can make as many programs as I want here uh, of any kind. So, you know, just for example, I'll make a little test program. So we can make JavaScript programs in here, Java, Python, HTML, and some others as well. So we're going to be working with HTML. Um, if we create a program through here, that's just creating a program within CodeHS that only the student or teacher would be able to see, unless the student shares it. Uh, instead of this, instead of creating a new program that would appear in this list down here, we're just going to go ahead and edit our CodeHS.me homepage. And so when I click on this, you'll see that I'm prompted to change my username, and that will be my username.codehs.me. This is how I'm claiming that website on the internet. And so this is my username right now. I'm gonna go ahead and change this to, I wonder if cats is taken. Let's make a website about cats. Oh, it's taken. Um, let's make one about dogs. Taken, oh my gosh. Let's make, oops. What if we make one about penguins? Sweet. All right, so penguins username was not taken. I claimed that domain. That's an interesting thing too about real domains is, you know, once one person has it, 
they have it. That's why there's not two facebook.coms or two google.coms. Um, so now I own penguins.codehs.me and I can go ahead and make a web page at that location. So it's been set. It's gonna take me into my code editor and this is where I'm actually gonna write the code that builds penguins.codehs.me. And so you'll see there's a few things here. This is where we're actually gonna write our HTML code. Over here is the file explorer. Right now there's just a single file index.html. That is the default page. That is the place where uh, if I either navigate to penguins.codehs.me or penguins.codehs.me slash index.html, those will both take me to the same place. So by default, index.html is the, the first home page that appears on this website. Um, and if I want, I could actually create another one. So we can make a little about.html. Now this is also available on that same domain. I just have to do slash about.html. But let's go ahead. And now you can create as many files as you want. You can't actually delete files because we don't want students losing their work accidentally. Um, and so, yeah, as many files as you want, as many web pages as you want. So here is where uh, it's good for students to have some knowledge of HTML and CSS already, even just HTML, no CSS. Um, and so this is a good place for students to apply what they're learning in some of our courses, including CS principles, computing ideas, web design. These are all courses that touch on how to build a code web or how to build a web page. Um, and this is just a place to make it public. So I'm gonna go to my docs and check out the HTML file skeleton. So this is kind of the, the starter template for any HTML page. I'm gonna just copy and paste this into the editor. So we're saying, you know, our page has a head and a body. We want page title to be welcome to my homepage. And here we'll just say, this is a page about penguins. So we can test our code out here. And if we want to actually view the website, we can either click this link or see homepage in a new window. So can everyone see this? I'm assuming everything is still working. Um, and so yeah, so we see this is a actual website, penguins.codehs.me. I can share this out and this is all we have so far. We have a title, welcome to my homepage. And we have some content on the page. This is a page about penguins. Um, and it's really as simple as that. So now we have a live page we can start putting things on. Um, and so this is a good place either to build maybe a professional homepage or for students to create links to some of their CodeHS projects that they're working on and kind of build a big portfolio of the projects that they're working on. Um, I'm going to go ahead and add some CSS styling so that this page looks a little better. Um, and we can show how we can do that by creating a CSS file. And add a new file to my little homepage project called style.css. And here's where I would write some CSS code to define kind of what colors and sizes uh, and styles should be on this web page. So we're gonna make it so that all H1 tags, which is a header tag, um, have a font size of 24 pixels and have a color of red. Actually, let's make it a color of white. So it's not gonna show up unless our body also has a background color, non-white. So let's make that light blue. And so I have some CSS rules, but I haven't actually used style.css yet on my index.html page. And so to make sure that these styles apply to this page, I need to actually link to it here in my head. And so if I go to docs, should be a section about adding CSS to an HTML page. We can either make a style tag and just type all the rules in there. Um, but it's a bit cleaner to use this external CSS, keep all your CSS code separate from your HTML code. So we just, then we, when we have that file, we can just link to it. And mine is called style.css. So now if I run this, awesome. It's an H1 tag. Awesome, see it's bigger and it's white. And so let's go ahead and include one image of a penguin as well. I like to use pixabay.com because they are uh, public domain pictures. So the, the artists that put their images on here, um, don't ex they're, they're not copywriting their images, we can, we can use them. So let's just search for penguins. Cool, so we see it's Creative Commons. I'm gonna download it. Well, we can just actually link to it. I'm gonna copy the image address. And then on my page, I can add an image tag. 
and the source is going to be that URL. Nice. It's a little big, so let's add one more CSS rule. Images where the width is 150 and the height is 150 pixels. Awesome. So this is just an example. You know, the, the possibilities are endless here. This is just a web page. So everything you can do with HTML and CSS and JavaScript can be done here on this, on this homepage. Um, I do want to show as well how we would make it so that this is a multi-page website. So you land on the homepage, that's the first place, but we want to be able to navigate around the site to different pages. And so I'm going to make a link, I'll make it at the bottom, a little horizontal rule, and then an H6. And again, the, all these tags, all these attributes, all these, these strategies that I'm using here, these are taught in uh, CodeHS curriculum around HTML and CSS. So I want to link to about.html. Run that. See, we have a little link now. Um, and that will take me to my domain slash about.html. Nothing's there yet. So now we just need to add that really quickly. Let's go ahead and use the same base template but I'm just going to change, let me get rid of the image. This is gonna go back to index.html. I'm gonna make it say, this website was built with love by Calvin. And so now I go about this site, there we go. And we can go back home. And so now let's say I just, you know, open up a new, a new page and just navigate to penguins.codehs.me. This is now available. Anyone can click around and navigate between the pages. And those are the basics of really just getting started making your own homepage. Uh, and from here, you know, this is a good tool for uh, the class to keep revisiting. And so maybe as soon as you learn, you know, you go through the first four lessons or so of uh, you know, the code HS HTML curriculum, you can bring students here and have them actually put their work on the internet on their own website. Um, and then as they continue through code HS, they can keep plopping things back into their website. Um, I'm going to stop and see, Emily, is there anything I should, any, anything I should shout out before I move on to kind of some more advanced features of this? Um, I think that should be good. Okay. So there's one more thing I wanted to show. Uh, just the fact really that this, um, we aren't limited to, you know, what CodeHS teaches. So students can really go out beyond and learn about web development and use this as a platform to uh, put on the internet the things that they're learning about web development. Oh, I see there's something in the chat. Okay, thanks, Claire. Um, yeah, so, you know, CodeHS teaches a lot about HTML and CSS. We talk about Bootstrap. We talk about... Uh, building virtual reality web pages. Um, but I think that's a good example is like, let's say students stumble upon some JavaScript library that they want to test out such as A-Frame. And so um, if you're unfamiliar with A-Frame, that is a JavaScript library that makes it so that you can build virtual reality worlds using HTML, which is really cool. Um, and we do have some curriculum around A-Frame. We have, if you go to codehs.com slash VR, you can find our virtual reality course and built some virtual reality roles there, uh, but I want to show how we can just link to it from our homepage. We can put this on the internet really quickly. And so if I link to, um, I've got a couple lines here, and I'm going to say, do my VR world. Now I'm linking to another place on this site called vr.html. I need to make that page. And I actually just copied this code over here. So I'm going to copy in what I, what I wrote earlier. So all this is doing, it's the same thing we saw before, but in the head, I've just included this external JavaScript library from A-Frame. And you can go to aframe.io to check out you know, other things you can do with A-Frame. It's just one example, building a VR world. Um, but I've now included this script in my head. And what this does is it's kind of like an import statement. It's, it's making it so that I have a brand new set of HTML tags to play with. So rather than just H1s and A tags and P tags and image tags, 
I now have things like an A scene and an A sphere or an A box or an A plane. And I can actually build these three dimensional shapes and the, the JavaScript library just kind of takes care of building it a uh, VR scene out of this. And so let's try this out. I'm gonna run this. I'm gonna view my VR world. And look at that. That takes me to a new page. I can kind of navigate around. So this is something separate. This is just kind of a, an advanced example of what you could do with this. Uh, but yeah, we have, we have a lot of lessons around how you can build VR worlds as well. And so that, that this can all be tied together. Everything students are learning on CodeHS can all be kind of built together and put in this one portfolio homepage. Let's check this out. Nice. Go back. And yeah, just like that. And in you know, no time at all, I've built a real website on the internet. This is really fun for students to put their work on the internet and kind of compile it in one place and be able to employ the HTML and CSS skills that they're learning in, in a real way without having to like purchase a domain and purchase a web server and put all these files somewhere. Code just takes care of all that. So yeah, that's really all I wanted to cover. Um, so hopefully this, you know, you can use this to build your own web pages and you can employ this in your own ways in your classrooms. Uh, and with that, yeah, is, are there any final questions? Anything um, we should cover? Do you want to cover um, a bit about uploading images and also embedding your own code from CodeHS? Yeah, yeah, we can cover that. So let's go back into the editor. And this generally isn't necessary. Uh, you can use any internet image on your homepage, but let's say uh, you have an image that isn't, it doesn't exist somewhere on the internet, you want to upload it. Code just actually provides a, way, provides a way to do that. So let's say instead of, let's actually visit this image. So imagine this, this image didn't exist on the internet. This was an image that I took and I have it stored on my computer. I'm gonna go ahead and download it. Now I have it downloaded and imagine, imagine a world where that wasn't on the internet and I needed a URL uh, for my image source tag. What I could do is just go over to the more tab here and there are a couple options here. One of them is upload. So I'm going to click upload and from here I could take a webcam picture, take a webcam video, record my voice on the microphone or I could just upload a file right from my computer. Um, and I could use and what the result is from any of these is a code HS URL that you could use in your program or on your web page. So I'm going to go ahead and upload a file, penguins.jpg. Got to wait a bit for it to upload and now, boom, I have it. And so I can now use this URL instead of that Pixabay URL. If we run the code, see the image still shows up. Um, and so this is a good way for students to, uh, again, not have to use some external website like Pixabay or Imgur or you know, some image hosting service. They can just do it right within CodeHS um, and not have to deal with any of that stuff. And then, yeah, the other thing is embedding one of your projects. So let's go back to the sandbox. And so a lot of students aren't just doing HTML and CSS on CodeHS, they're making JavaScript programs and JavaScript can actually just be run right on a web page. And so um, it's really easy to embed uh, the JavaScript programs that you make on your homepage. So let's try JavaScript. Create a graphics program. And all it's going to do is have a ball that bounces around. So in start, I'm going to make the make a new circle of size 25, radius of 25. I'm going to add it to the screen. That works. Cool. Let's set its position to 50 50. Awesome. And now I'm going to set a timer. Um, to animate the ball once every 40, 40 milliseconds. I need to write my animate function, and all it's gonna do 
um, is move the ball by two pixels in the x direction and two pixels in the y direction. Awesome. And so what we can do is now that we've built this, it's running in this editor, but this is kind of hard to show anyone else outside of CodeHS. What we can do is go to more, go to share, um, or actually go to embed, sorry. So what share will do is we can create a share link for this program. And now this on its own is shareable, but your this is the format in which it's being shared. It's still a CodeHS page. It still kind of has the title and run code, stop code. If instead I want to embed it right on my web page, I can go to embed. And this is the source code right here. This is all the code that would be needed to run this program that I just built on a you know, vanilla, like brand new HTML page. And so I'm just going to copy this, make a new file that says my, or no, program.html, and just paste in exactly what I copied from the embed tab. So go to more, embed, copy all this, and then that is exactly what you want for this brand new web page. Um, and so how do we get to program.html? We need to make a link to it. A link to program.html, view my JavaScript program. If we run this, oh. there we go. And so we can actually check this out. And there we go. And what's cool is we can, we can, really customize how this program is being shown. So right now it's just kind of a, a basic format. We have a title and um, a canvas and a, and a header, but I could, you know, I could change the color of this header. I could add a background uh, color to this page. I could add more CSS styles besides just the canvas and the pre. And so you have full customization here to just build a JavaScript program and put it on your web page. Um, and you're not limited to just that one. You can keep, you know, for every, every new JavaScript program I make, I can follow a similar process and just build this full portfolio on my homepage. So yeah, let's see what else is in the chat. Emily's just posting some more help articles around this. Um, but yeah, so those are, that's really, yeah, a full, a full suite, not only just the basics of getting to the homepage, claiming a subdomain by setting your username and just building the basic homepage. As you learn more and more about JavaScript, about virtual reality, about HTML and CSS, you can just keep coming back to here and building up more and more features on your homepage. Are there any final questions? Emily, anything else that I should shout out? Um, I think we're good. Okay, awesome. Well, thank you everyone for joining. I hope uh, this was useful information for you in your classroom. Uh, this is a really cool feature of CodeHS, just having this ability to very quickly and easily put a real website on the internet. Um, and I hope you join us for our next webinar, which will be how to run Java online with CodeHS. And that'll be Tuesday, November 13th at 2.30 p.m. Pacific Standard.